All right, this is the Diva Ring. It's very fun to make. It was great to do in OpenSCAD, but as with all things that are artistic endeavors, they tend to be messy. So it's always a good idea to just clean up your code. So we're gonna let people know that we're cleaning up our code. We're gonna update it with the date. Today is the 14th, and then we're gonna hit F5 and make sure everything functions. And now we're gonna start getting rid of things that we didn't use that were part of the copy and paste, okay? So, mark one, we didn't use, that's deleted, okay? The gemstone, that was definitely used, you can see that here and here. The offset channel ring, that is our base object, right? We definitely use that. And then the spikes, Clearly this ring has spikes, so that was a useful module. And then we wrote in a little note here saying, by the way, we broke some of the rules from the baseline code. But as we go through, there's actually a section here that says, don't need the part for the ring, okay? So let's get that out of there, boom, gone. And here we are at the baseline object. You can see uh, there's a little comment saying, this is my gaudy monstrosity. It's a pretty fun ring. Uh, it exists in metal, but we'll get there later. And as we go through the design, you can see that some of the functions are being called later. So gemqd is left as its own module. That allows you to select one stone or the other and really decide, like, do you want to flush that one size stone, the same size stone? It gave more control than the gem ring. But as we go further down, this giant prong setting, right, that's copied and pasted from a stone setting module. And so we cite the source here in case people don't know to read from the beginning, right? But it's always good form to cite your source material. So as we go back down to the stone setting, right? Those files were incorporated right here, okay? So if you look at thing of first, there's a prong setting for faceted gems. That was just copied and pasted into the code. And the original code that was used was actually from the ring demonstration demo. I think it was the spike ring, which is like this one. And uh, if you go to thing details, that would be uh, mark five. So if you're to download, click thing files and find ring demo mark five, right? And that would get you started for the baseline code that we have here. From there, I ended up combining these two prongs into a simpler version. So I will probably post this subsection of code as it's an own module so people can drag and drop and combine with whatever they're they're doing. The modular design is really fun. Uh, one last thing about the design is as far as 3D printability goes, this thing is a nightmare without the sprue tree. So somewhere in here I call sprue tree and if we comment that out, trying to print in this orientation, the prongs get in the way and you end up with more support than you need uh, with the, the actual spikes. And then if you rotate it to, is it the right view, top view, one of the views. Yeah, that'll work. So if you print it with the object oriented as such, uh, there's no stable way to hold it to the platform. And again, you end up with too much support and then trying to print it inverted like so, like so. Again, the prongs don't really support the whole ring. There's not enough contact angle to make that work. And then you would still need support for these spikes. And it's just a nightmare to clean up. So you need the sprue tree as a function. And that makes it easy to cast the object and then print the object in one shot. So once you're done with the code, you just want to make sure that there's a compile and render, everything works. All the things are fine. Then you go back to the top and you say, okay, I cleaned up the code for use. I've got the date right. I've cited my sources. And then you're ready to just post this up and let anybody goof off with it.